Space that you're in, God blesses us to enter into whenever we seek Him in all fullness. And one thing you never want to do is rush past when God is blessing in a manner to free people. Yes. Never fully know what folk go through. And sometimes you just need to let the Holy Spirit do what just only the Holy Spirit can do. God being good to us is something he always is. Just sometimes we need to sit still and acknowledge that. And I thank God for the praise team entering us into this space of what I would say uh, deep worship of God. And so since we're in this space, I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes so we can receive a word from God according to his good and perfect will. With every eye closed and every head bowed, Father, thank you for your presence in this house. God, sometimes we just need a tangible touch of how good you really are. God, the things that you've blessed us to experience, things that you've blessed us to be protected from. Times, God, that you saw fit to take us out of pits when others thought we were done, you said, you know, we're your children. And you love us unconditionally, so you bless us according to your good and perfect will. And God, sometimes we just don't get it right, and you still are long-suffering, and still encourage and support, and still put us on a firm foundation, God. And sometimes we walk away, and you still pursue us. So God, you're good in a way that sometimes we can't even fully comprehend. So we thank you because you're good because of just who you are. And so, Father, in this moment, as you've blessed us to be into this uh, deep aspect of worshiping you in spirit and in truth, God, we ask that you pour your blessing out on your people via your word. God, it's your word that will change us from the inside out. Your word gives us knowledge of you, relational connection with you, and understanding of you, and actually a way to apply that understanding, God, to how we live our lives. So we thank you for the word you're going to give right now. God, use this earthen vessel as only you can. Move art out of the way in total and just pour a word through this walking mound of dust. But God, bless your people right now to hear from you. Not to be concerned about later, but the here and now is the most important thing. And God, I ask that you shatter some stuff that you change our perspective, and that you bless us as only you can. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's give God a huge hand clap of praise. <laughs> bless God, bless God, bless God. <laughs> Haven't said this in a little while, so excited to say this one. Are you ready for the word? <laughs> bless God. Yay. So what I want to do is I want us to look at this next slide quickly. And I want, Ron, if you could turn the light off. I just want you all to look at this quickly. And some of you are going to read as we normally read. And when we normally look at slides, we look at them and we would look at this and we would say authority under faith. But that's not what the title of this sermon is. 
the title of this sermon, and that's why sometimes you need to be shook up just in how you handle stuff. Sometimes you just need to be shocked into a space as only God can, and sometimes he wants you to look at something differently. And so actually the title of this sermon is Faith Under Authority. See, if you put faith under authority in the opposite order, what happens is, is faith actually isn't under authority, it's over it. And sometimes we live our lives with a faith that we think is over the authority of Christ Jesus. And this Roman soldier that you see in this picture, he's going to show you something today. He's going to show you something that is going to, I think, shatter some stuff, but also support and encourage us to be able to actually live our lives with faith under authority. So turn to your neighbor and say, faith, faith. under faith. authority. Turn to your other neighbor and say, faith, faith. under authority authority. Now for yourself, say faith, faith under authority. Now I want those lights back on quickly. And we're going to talk about some stuff. I want to run to this next slide quickly so you can stand to your feet as we're going to look at Matthew, the eighth chapter and the fifth verse in the New Living Translation. So Matthew 8 and 5 in the New Living Translation reads, when Jesus returned to Capernaum, a Roman officer came and pleaded with him. You may be seated. I want to take you into a space, and there was a lot of time that God uh, blessed me when I was uh, on Sabbath and also on vacation to just sit and listen to him. Like sometimes the greatest thing you can do with God is just listen, not talk. And sometimes your prayer doesn't, mean, doesn't need to be what you need because he already knows that. Sometimes you just need to sit still and just let him tell you stuff. Like I began to realize you have two ears and one mouth for a reason. You should actually listen more than you talk. But sometimes in our lives what winds up happening is, is we have this concept that we could actually tell God stuff that he don't already know. And so I was sitting there, and he was giving me all these one-off sermons, and I'm writing this stuff down. And he took me to this space, and, and I was thinking about preaching some other stuff. And he said, no, I just preach this one. He said, help them to shatter some stuff because they have the wrong concept of what actually faith under authority really is. Some of us, when we get older, we want to have authority over ourselves. And this is a misconception. You never truly have authority over yourself. You will never in your life, I don't care how old you are, you will never have greater authority than Jesus Christ. But in the household of faith, and sometimes even in, even in the world, we don't talk about that. And so this Roman officer is going to show us something today. And it's huge because he's going to help us understand that ain't no way your boss should have more authority over your life than Jesus. And he's actually going to shatter some of our mindsets and concepts on who really has authority because the interesting thing the older that you get and I draft documents the older that you get you wind up realizing that somebody may have authority over you and you were so busy fighting your whole life to be able to prove to the world that you could do what you want when you want how you want rather than realizing that all God wants you to do is not just recognize and be under the blood of Christ but to actually be under the authority of Christ. You realize, and this is huge and we're going to get here, sometimes the blessing you're not receiving is because you're not willing to give in to the authority that's over you. Let's just stay in a space. Love God for this. Sometimes the way you act on your job is the way you act in the kingdom. And sometimes when you are that worker that just won't do what you told, it's hard for you to be told how to be blessed. We not there. And sometimes the way you are at your job ain't the way you are in the kingdom. Sometimes on your job, your boss could say, and do this. Hop. Get in the kingdom and you got opinions and discussion. I didn't hear no, say on, pastor, say on. I'll say it for myself, say on, pastor, say on. 
<laughs> ain't got to wait on the amen. I got them in me. I got them in me. I told y'all that I had some time off. But let's run into the space where this Roman officer is going to run us through something that's going to shatter some stuff but build some stuff up. So go back one. So this Roman soldier, as Jesus is entering into Capernaum, he's returning to a place that he's been many times before. Jesus has done a lot of miracles in Capernaum. Read Matthew 8 for yourself. Peter lives there. He's actually going to heal Peter's mother. And, and, and he's going to help her be able to do some stuff because she was sick. So he winds up checking on her and healing her. He heals a man from leprosy, all these kind of awesome things. He winds up in other scripture verses in the New Testament. He actually heals a man that was possessed by a demon. He goes, he's teaching in the Sabbath every Sunday. Just read about Capernaum. And Capernaum was this economic center. Ooh, love God for that. It was an economic center. Let me, let, me, let me share something with you about when economics is your center. When economics is your center, you can miss some stuff because you'll believe that money has authority over you. Watch this. Authority means a level of influence to be able to control your behavior. When money has authority over you or it's your center. What happens is, is your behavior becomes consistent with that which you are giving authority. So you seek that rather than seeking God who said he'll take care of all of your needs. And if God is not your center, then when money and God come into conflict, what winds up happening is you choose who's going to have authority. Hmm. So this Roman officer, he's there, and this is the funny thing. I want you to think about this. The Roman officer has people who have authority over him, but he winds up going to Jesus. And this don't make no sense. He's a Roman officer. That means that he's under the authority of Caesar, which means that he already knows that in the world's concept, Caesar has greater authority than Jesus. But who is he pleading to? Jesus. That's the truth. Because now this Roman officer has said that in the world, there's some that have authority over me, but I can't get what I need from the world. I can only get it from he who has authority, who is Jesus. And this is a huge thing, and we're going to read this later, run to the next verse quickly. We're going to see why he's actually going to Jesus. He goes to Jesus in verse 6, and this is a huge thing. He says, Lord. See, lordship establishes authority. See, this is the thing. Stay here with me for just a second. Some of us are like, no, nah, pastor, don't use that word. Because, see, we don't understand lordship the way that they understood lordship. The minute that they said lord, that means that that person had authority. They had the authority to be able to tell them what to do, when to do it, how to do it, where to do it, all the rest of that. And those of us who have been in the military, I haven't been blessed to be in the military myself, but there's some things about military training and instruction. That when your superior officer tells you certain things, you don't question, you just do. And you might even do with some stuff on your lips, but your superior officer better not hear you saying something negative about the instruction that they've given. We won't use that in the household of faith, but I begin to realize and understand that this Roman officer is going to teach us something today. He says, Lord, establishes authority he says my young servant lies in bed paralyzed and in terrible pain he didn't even go to jesus for himself check this check your prayer life if your prayer life is all about you it needs to mature if your prayer life is only about what jesus gonna do for you it gotta get some maturity reason it got to get some maturity is when you start really praying and wanting God to bless other people. Love God for this. You can mess around and have some blessings come back to you. But when your prayer life is just God bless me with this. God do this for me. God please would you. And I ain't saying not to include yourself but it just can't be all I. <laughs> got to be about some other people. So this Roman officer puts himself in a position where he actually is breaking the chain of command. He done messed around and stepped outside. He said, listen, my superior officers can't do what Jesus can do. Love God for this. Some of us in this room, your boss can't do what Jesus can do. And you got to check yourself there. 
There ain't no way I'm going to speak this and some of us going to be like, Pastor, stay off of it. No way you're going to have perfect attendance at your job. Stay in the space. Get up early in the morning. Early in the morning. You are there. It is dark when you go to work. My goodness. It's dark sometimes when you come home. You are there for 10, 12, 14 hours. Two hours is a stretch, though, when it comes to kingdom stuff. Pastor, can you get done earlier? Can we change the time? I don't know. Nine come quick, Pastor. Nine don't always came at the same time. Nine ain't changed. You would tell me you got to be to work at 7 in the morning. You there at 6.45. 9 o'clock come, it's, woo, it was rough this morning. <laughs> Wasn't rough Monday through Friday? But it's how you start your week. If Sunday is the beginning, it's how you start. But just, just stay in space with me, please. He said, Lord, my young servant lies in bed, paralyzed, terrible pain. He ain't there for himself. He done done all this. He's willing to step outside the chain of command because he got a servant that's in bed, paralyzed and in terrible pain. When the last time you went to Jesus for somebody? Real talk. And when the last time you went to Jesus without an issue of yours, but you went there just to intercede for somebody else? You said, Jesus, I'm only here. Jesus, it ain't about me, Jesus. You're going to see something about this Roman officer that's off the hook. The Roman officer is about to do something that I was shocked by. Because watch this. Jesus says this, and this is the thing that I love. Oh, I love God for this. And stop judging people on whether you think they know Jesus or not. This Roman officer might not have came off like he knew Jesus, but watch this. Jesus says to him, he says, Jesus said, I will come and heal him. Jesus said, all you got to do is ask me. I'll show up. I'll come heal him. You know why? Because I'm Jesus. And you came, watch this, and you submitted yourself to my authority. You said to yourself, you call me Lord. And as a result, because I know the level of faith that you have, I am now going to come and I'm going to heal the servant. Now stay here for just a second. Run to this next slide. And I'm going to show you something <clears throat> quickly. In verse 8 it says, but the officer said, now this is the thing. I don't know how you talk back to Jesus. Jesus said, I'm going to come healing. I'm going to come to the house. And some of us, we like, Jesus, come to my house. Jesus, come hang out. Jesus, just reside here. And that's cool. I get that. But watch what this Roman officer says, which is huge, and it blew me away. This Roman officer tells Jesus, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come into my house. Now, wait a second. That's some levels of humility that this Roman officer is saying. And he's not saying this is a thing that's huge. I believe that he knew that he had a level of worth, but he put himself under the authority of Jesus, which meant that he said, listen, I'm not even worthy. And there's some places in the Bible where people talk about worth, but it's not to tear themselves down. They're comparing and looking at the awesomeness of God. So he said, I'm not worthy, Jesus, for you to come into my house. But watch this. He says this. He says, I'm not worthy to have you come into my house. But this is the thing. I, I, ooh, we was here. It says, just say the word. Turn to your neighbor and say, just say the word. I said to your other neighbor, just say the word. Now say it for yourself, just say the word. Now watch this, he says, from where you are. Now Jesus said, I'll come to the house. The officer says, Jesus, I ain't worthy to have you come to my house. All I need you to do, Jesus, open your mouth and say the word from right where you at. You know what kind of belief you got to have? Some of us, Jesus, come and heal and touch. Some of us need to say, Jesus, just say something over the situation. We ain't there. Jesus, just say the word from where you are, and my servant will what? Be healed. You know what kind of faith this guy got to have? He got to have the kind of faith to be bold enough to speak to Jesus, to tell Jesus no. Y'all missed that. 
Jesus said, I will come and heal him. He's basically saying, no, Jesus, you ain't got to do all that. Jesus, if you just speak it out your mouth, it's good enough. Jesus, you ain't got to move your feet from where you are. Jesus, you ain't got to exert no more energy. Jesus, you ain't even got to break a sweat. All you got to do is just say something. If you got that kind of faith, but watch this. But he put his faith under Jesus' authority. See, some of us, we got faith, but we ain't under authority. Watch this. See, I call myself an under shepherd for a reason. See, some folks, the pastor, and many times, I'm the under shepherd of GCDC. And some people are like, what does under shepherd mean? Under shepherd means that you're a shepherd under a shepherd. Which means that there's one good shepherd who's Jesus. What I am is an under shepherd to him. It helps me keep myself humble and also to understand that I am under his authority. We ain't there. But watch this. Ah, umbrellas. 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 So it was raining outside, right? Some of us, I don't want to get wet. Chocolate milk. <laughs> right? And what happens is, watch this, you accept Jesus Christ as Savior, right? But what's the phrase we usually say? People usually say they accept him as Lord and Savior. That's what you say. What you say, but what I do is I try to look at actions. So if you accept Jesus Christ as Savior, you want to be what? Covered by what? Somebody finish it. Covered by the blood. You want to be covered. What? You better check yourself to all this right here. Nothing can touch me. Because I'm covered by what? The blood of Jesus. That's the thing. I don't know where we got this mentality, though, that we could automatically separate the blood of Jesus from the authority of Jesus. Covered by the blood. But when it comes to authority, Jesus saved me, right? Wash me, cleanse me. Jesus, wash all my sins away. But don't tell me what to do. You live your life covered by the blood when it satisfies you, when it's comfortable. But when the authority comes, no, nah, Jesus, I'm good. I can do it on my own. But the blood saves. But the authority. Save me, Jesus, but don't tell me what to do. Save me, Jesus, but don't order my steps. Save me, Jesus, but don't check my, don't check me, Jesus. But save me, Jesus. And some of us done got so bold where I'm covered by the blood, but when it comes to authority, I got all authority. This Roman officer said, wait a second, y'all got that twisted. Let me share with y'all how it's supposed to go. Run to the next one. This Roman officer breaks it down. He says he knows something. This is cool. Elder Ron, you helped this morning. I always try to use breakfast when we eating, right? So he broke down breakfast this morning. He said that you're supposed to diligently gain some aspects of knowledge and virtue and brotherly affection. All these things, he was talking about that. And so when the Roman officer says something, he says, I know something. But watch this, this is huge. He says, I know this. He says, I know you can heal just by speaking a word. Why? He says, I know this because watch this. He says, I am what? Under. The authority. Wait a second. So hold on. I got I, I to walk y'all through where God took me. So if this Roman officer could break the chain of command to say that he is now asking Jesus to bless and heal his servant, that means that Jesus has power that the Roman officers who are above him don't have. The Roman officers that are below him don't have that authority or that power either. So he goes to Jesus to get something done that nobody else can do. But what he then starts to relate to Jesus, he says, I know that you can do this because I know about authority. See, some of us, we want to know a lot of stuff. But we don't want to know authority, but we want authority. Authority costs. You can't be in it and then think everybody going to like you. 
You can't be in it and think that everybody going to do what you say do. But watch this. I love God for this. But the Roman officer says, I know about this. Why? He says, because I got those. I am under the authority of my superior officers. Stay here. Many of us in this room are under the authority of somebody at a job. So you know about authority. It ain't that you don't. It's just when you come to the household of faith, you buck against it. Ooh, stay off, pastor. And why do you buck against it? Not because you don't, it's not because of a heart issue a lot of times. It's just because we don't translate what we give to the world into the kingdom. Ah, we ain't there. Because think about this, it says, I am under the authority of my superior officers, and I have authority over my soldiers. Watch this, and I love God for this, and how the Roman officer looks at Jesus. He says, all he needs to do is to say, go, and they what? Go. <laughs> he says, come, and they what? Come. And then he said, if he says to his slaves, do this, they what? Do it. <laughs> Wait a second. That made me laugh. You know why? Because this guy is saying, if I tell them to go, they go. If I tell them to come, they come. If I tell them to do it, they do it. How can he go to Jesus, said he know about authority, because he's obedient to the authority that's over him. He expects Jesus to heal the servant, but he understands that when Jesus says do something, watch this, he understands that when Jesus says go, you go. He understands that when Jesus says come, you come. He understands that when Jesus says do it, you're supposed to do it. You know why? Because the officers that he's under and the officers that he's over, they understand authority. I think we come into the house of the faith sometimes, and it's just real talk, and we struggle with this. You know why? Because sometimes you done fought so hard to have an authority over yourself that you don't realize that you never really had authority over yourself. You understand when you go to Matthew 28 and the 18th verse, it says that Jesus has been given all authority. In the King James Version, it says power. Read the word for yourself. Power and authority in the Greek are the exact same word. Hmm. So stay here. Some of us might say to ourselves, well, I'm under the blood, but I'm not under the authority. But if power and authority are the exact same thing, then really you're not under the power either. Some of us are powerless because you are outside the chain of command. And sometimes what God does is he blesses. When you get outside the chain of command, he loves you so much. He said, listen, it's, it's, it's hectic out there. Come on back in under my authority so I can tell you what to do the right way. And some of us, we just hard-headed. It's just real talk. It's just, and, and you're stubborn. You just, I'm going to do it my way. And Jesus says, you ain't got no way. You keep doing it your way and it causes problems. So let me share with you, just let me take you behind the veil of an under shepherd. Real quick. Under shepherds who have God's heart only want you to obey him. But they also want you to obey the authority that's been placed over you. And if the authority, watch this, stay here. I got to free somebody. Sometimes you was in a prior setting and the authority was jacked up. They abused their authority. Don't carry that into your next house or your next relationship. You know why? Because then you think everybody that's in authority is an abuser of the authority. You don't know how many times I hear people bash pastors based upon one negative experience. And I say to myself, First of all, I'm wondering how we don't have knowledge of don't put your mouth on spiritual leaders. <sighs> what is it? What is it? it, it, it it's, there's aspects of we do stuff and we feel like we got authority to do certain things. And I'm not telling you to hold your tongue and not speak truthful stuff. But in the same token, you got to watch yourself. Because if you are speaking negative, I love God for this. Stay here for just a second. If you're speaking negative about those that have authority over you, and God done told them to tell you certain things that either needs to get done or the word has instructed or told you that you are to respect those who have authority over you, how do you think you're going to be blessed if you're bucking against the authority that God has placed over you? Stay here. 
And because you got hurt in a prior setting or because the authority was jacked up in the prior setting, you bring that in and you judge the person by the authority and the stuff that happened in the prior setting. Many of us had prior relationships before we got with our boo, our spouse, or whatever. Sometimes what you did was you took the good one through. All the stuff the bad one did. And you got to ask yourself, why did I do that? Why? Because you didn't. All, you didn't automatically tell yourself, let me get under the authority of the one who is Jesus, and then he'll bless me with somebody who will have levels of authority over me so I could do what he's instructed me to do. Stay here for just a second. So he says, go and they go, come and they come, and if he say to his slaves, do this, they do it. If you talk to many under shepherds, that's not always the case. But watch this. I love God for this. Sheep, which all of us are, are actually docile animals. So how are we sheep under the good shepherd and an under shepherd could give you instruction and you say, I'm too busy, I'm too tired. I don't work too hard at my job. Do you realize, stay here for just a second. Sometimes you don't work so hard because you ain't letting God do his job. You're trying to work to provide and he said, I'll take care of all your needs. And this is the thing I love about God. He ain't gonna fight you. I've never known God to fight you for authority. I'm going to share this too, and then I'll run to this next part. I talk to people about authority, and I said, when you got it, you ain't got to prove it. There's some people want you to prove you got authority. And the authority that a person has ain't the title. It's the lifestyle. I love God for this. Let me stay in the space for just a second. I got to run to this next verse. Sometimes you want to say, and the leader better do X, Y, and Z. If the leader doing X, Y, and Z, you better do X, Y, and Z. He ain't going to clap there. You know why? You know why we won't clap there? Because if the leader does X, Y, and Z, and you're not doing X, Y, and Z, you always feel free to give an excuse why you're not doing X, Y, and Z. And then you say, well, the leader needs to show the way. And that's cool. But if the leader is showing the way, and they turn around, and they're looking for you, and you say to yourself, well, I'm not there, then are you really under the authority of Jesus? Watch this. Because you done messed around and thought that the leader who's under Jesus hasn't given you direction haven't given you instruction and direction directly from him. Mm. <sighs> then you ask yourself, stay here for just a second. Are there some stuff in your life that's being held up? Do you find yourself on a carousel? And it seems like the same stuff keep coming around? And you want to get off? And every time you want to get off, the same result happens? And you ask yourself, why is this happening? I'm covered by the blood. But when Jesus said, don't get on the carousel. When Jesus said, them people going to lead you down the road. When Jesus said, some of the stuff from your past is already over with and you keep reliving it. When Jesus said, watch this, you need to forgive them. Watch this, let me, let me share something with y'all that happened to me just recently so I can run to this next verse and be done. There was a person who had questioned my integrity as an attorney. And I didn't like that because for me, first of all, I answered to God. And secondly, I answered to the Ohio State Bar Association. So for me, integrity and virtue and all that stuff really means something. Like it come down to the penny for me. Like if I owe you a penny, I'm going to make sure you get the penny. You might get a check in the mail with one cent on it because I'm that serious about the integrity that I have. Because I got to answer to God first and then those that have authority over me. Right. And so this person was saying some negative stuff and I didn't really like what they said. And then so the conversation came back up and I wound up seeing the person in the setting and I ran over and gave him a hug. You know why? Check this out. I ain't going to say that I really wanted to at first because the human side of me said, why do that? But the authority of Jesus says, if I don't forgive them, he ain't going to forgive me. See, sometimes his authority will shape how you act. But watch this. But when you're outside of it, <laughs> your actions always speak louder than your words. I'm a believer. But your actions speak louder than your words. God, whatever you tell me to do, but your actions speak louder they words, God, just tell me to go and I'm going to go but your actions. Speak louder than your words. So run to this next part because I got to be done. 
When Jesus heard this, watch this, he was amazed. When the last time you did something in your life that amazed Jesus? Roman officer did. Roman officer amazed Jesus. He says, turning to those who were following him, he said, I tell you the truth, I haven't seen faith like this in all Israel. How did this man turn his faith under authority into something that amazed Jesus? Do you know how many people it was in Israel? You know how many folk he had seen? Do you know that Jesus knows all? And he said that you done done something ain't nobody else done. Mm. And he said, and watch this, and if the world taught you how to be obedient under its authority, and you brought your authority under me, how much more am I going to do what you asked me because you called me your Lord? We didn't ask Jesus to save us. He didn't done that. But now we need his lordship to guide us. I'm learning, and this is real talk for me as an under-shepherd. I'm beginning to get this. Some people, man, you're going to spend your whole life, and he's only going to be savior. Lordship is different. Lordship is a sacrifice, too. Sometimes you don't want to get up and go. That's real talk. Let me take you behind the veil of, of an under shepherd. We human just like all y'all. I don't want y'all to sit up and think that the under shepherd is all, whoo, let me get up at seven. That ain't how it always is. There's some stuff that you do. Why? Just because you're under authority. And you say to yourself, I got to do it because Jesus says I need to do this thing. And if I'm going to give somebody else on the outside, a level of respect and obedience to what they want me to do. There ain't no way that Jesus shouldn't be able to tell me to go wherever he want me to go and do whatever he want me to do. So stay here. Said, I tell you the truth, I haven't seen faith like this in all Israel. Run to 13, I'm done. 13, it says, then Jesus said to the Roman officer, now this is cool, Jesus told him, go back home. <clears throat> But watch this. You know why he told him to go back home? Because the Roman officer believed something. He said, because you believed, it has happened. Who stay here. And the young servant was here, what? That same hour. Stay here. Oh, I got to drop this and I, oh, I got to be done. There's some stuff in your life that you think take a long time. Because this Roman officer subjected his authority to Jesus Christ. The servant who couldn't get to Jesus got healed not because of the servant's faith, we ain't there, but because of the faith and belief of this Roman officer who said, all I got to do with you, Jesus, is get to you and have you speak on the situation. There's some stuff in your life that you ain't got Jesus to speak on yet. And the reason you ain't got Jesus to speak on it yet is you still think you got authority over it. Jesus said, if you give it to me, I'll heal it and change it. But as long as you got authority, I ain't going to fight you for authority. Jesus tells him, he said, listen, you go on and go back home. I done done what you asked. You know why I did it? Because you got faith. And I ain't seen this kind of faith in all of Israel. God is trying to raise up a remnant of folk right now who only want Jesus to speak over stuff. We want Jesus to show up and touch and all this other kind of stuff. The words of Jesus Christ have such power, but we don't use it because we don't fall under his authority. If you under his authority, he can speak something through you. We ain't there. That will change an atmosphere. But when you ain't under his authority, you searching for your own words. Your own words ain't changed nothing yet, and you're still sitting there waiting on something to change. It ain't going to change until you get your faith under his authority. When your faith is under his authority, you won't be shook by stuff. You'll be able to stand in places that others won't. You'll be able to let go of some stuff that's been binding you up. You'll be able to let your past be your past because your past ain't got no authority over your present or your future. When, dear, when you strive to live your life with a level of faith, that moves mountains under the authority of he who created the mountains. There ain't nothing that can't get done for God's people. We live in a world right now where our leaders 
are not under Jesus' authority. There's stuff that's happening that's totally counter to everything that the Word of God say. And God is looking for some Roman soldiers. He's looking for some folk that don't look like they know. He's looking for, as Delray would say, some misfits that just don't fit in the mission of the world any longer. You done got snatched out, and God said, now I got to change and re-equip you so that way you can do what I want you to do. I'm equipping you for a war that you only going to have victory in in Jesus. But in order to win it, your faith has to be under his authority. Stand to your feet. <clears throat> Bow your heads, close your eyes. Father, seal it by your power. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Have a seat quickly because we done ran a little bit over time.